Welcome back to another episode of Winning Through Culture. I'm Tim Flanagan. I'm excited to be here today with Chelsea Pulowski, Head of Marketing at Flora Group, and Tori Thomas, CEO and co-founder of Circa. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Tuning in from Nashville, Tennessee. I was going to say, it's great to have you with us, Tori. And Chelsea has been a guest on Winning Through Culture before. I gave a little bit of background on Tori Thomas our guest from Circa today. So she is not only the CEO, but co-founder of Circa. Circa is a creative company that is involved in branding and helping entrepreneurs and visionaries grow their good ideas into great enterprises through strategic design. Tori is a native of Texas, went to school in Alabama, now lives in the wonderful city of Nashville, Tennessee, a mother of three children, a dog lover, and not only juggling the managing of a family, but the growing of a great business that helps entrepreneurs and businesses, again, kind of define who they are, help define their culture, and then articulate that into a story they can share with the marketplace. So it's great to have you with us, Tori. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate that intro. I'm excited to talk about branding. Well, we are too. And Chelsea, again, being head of marketing in the Flora Group was a instrumental part in our organization's rebrand efforts. And I thought, Today, the conversation that I'd love to have is really about how a branding or rebranding effort can help not only capture and articulate a culture, but build and share the story of that culture. So what I thought I would do is just share a little bit about the experience that we had just from my lens and give a shout out to you and your team at Circa for the work you did. I really would love, though, to hear as I share our vantage point on what that is, as to how you and your team approach working with a business, again, to tell their story, kind of your view of what a brand is. So I'll start with our experience. Chelsea and I were meeting with our team a couple of years back now, Mm -hmm. and we realized two things. One is we were uh, had a brand that was not suiting or fitting who we were as an organization. And it did not really reflect the local culture and dynamics of what we do for our clients, which happen to be financial advisors. We also realized that we wanted a brand that reflected more of the future than the past. And the organization has been around since 1935. So we've been around a long time, but we didn't want to have a staid old nostalgic feel. We really wanted something fresh and forward thinking. So after a great deal of internal conversation and interviewing a number of firms, we were fortunate to meet you and your team and were really wowed by what you had to offer. And really what I see from an experience perspective is you guys did a fantastic job of articulating what we struggled to articulate, which is the essence of who we were or who we saw ourselves to be, who we desired to be as an organization, which in many respects is a reflection of the culture we had created and the culture we want to create. So from my vantage point, Tori, you guys did a fantastic job of capturing that. I know, again, when you hear about a company like yours, someone may say, oh, they're going to design a logo or they're going to come up with this. And that's all a part of the process. But that was not To me, what this was about, it was about the story and capturing that story in a way that we can then tell it and amplify it. So from your seat, Tori, what do you see when you and your team come into an organization as to how you kind of approach what a company may try to be doing as far as telling their story? So I was so excited to talk specifically with both Tim and Chelsea on this to talk about branding because the process of the Plura Group was so wonderful. It was really our ideal process. And I would say when we approach or when a client approaches us and they are ready to start that brand process, it is so important that they know what they would like and they really want a brand, not just a logo. We do logos, we do creative work. And so a lot of the work on the front end for us is just to ensure that that client is committed to the process. They're committed to doing it intentionally and doing it from that inside out. And some clients come to us and we realize that really what they want is just the logo and to move on. And it's so unfortunate because they miss out on what a brand can truly do for them 
they're really just getting kind of like a surface level approach. It's going to help. A great logo can help, but it's not going to do anything substantial for that business's growth or for some of those pain points that happen when you don't have a great brand. So my hope is that, and again, one of the things that's so nice about talking through branding is often clients, it's not because they don't want what a great brand offers. It's because they don't understand that it requires a certain level of commitment. It also requires time. You have to get the right people in the room. You have to talk through questions. You have to really dig deep into what makes you different and why. And this is not typically a quick process, so it can feel a little painful. It's kind of like, sometimes I refer to it as business therapy. You've got to do that hard work of digging in deep and pulling out stuff that works really well for your business, but also the things that are kind of in that dark, dingy corners that you kind of would like to just gloss over. And one of the wonderful things about working specifically with the Polar Group was you all were committed. I think having that meeting early on that you determined we need this and you had a focus in place and you also determined we need help to get that done. Once you came to us, you were in that right spot. You knew exactly what we could do and then it allowed us to do our best work. So I know that kind of went a little all over the place, but to summarize, I would say brand work is so important, but it does require a client who's committed to the process, who's committed to kind of digging deep and really understanding who they are as an organization, why they exist, and how it's different than the other groups in their space. And it requires a a lot of that digging deep, a lot of conversation. And then the outcome on our end is we translate that into the terminology that works for your team and then the visuals that communicate to your clients or your customers. But without that foundation of a client's engagement and really commitment to the process, we only can get so far. Thank you for that, Tori. We did struggle with the timing of this a great deal. And I think you definitely articulated the time commitment. It is, was a significant commitment of time and resources. Do you see, you know, the audience of this podcast, really entrepreneurs, business owners, do you see a time in space being better or not for a business to go through a process like this? Or is it just kind of when you're ready to commit? That is such a great question because this is also another thing that I think gets really is misunderstood about the branding process. I think that there's definitely an iterative approach that you can take. And when you're just starting off, I think what we tend to do is we call them starter brand packages. And they are pretty fast or almost in kind of like more of a sprint methodology or trying to get what we know. Because at that point in a business, you're making a lot of assumptions. Like often people might not even have, they might not be profitable. They might not even really have clients or customers, or maybe they do, but they're pretty few and it was more word of mouth. So there's a lot of things that we're developing as a brand where we're just making assumptions and you almost have to lean on that industry knowledge. You have to look at competitors, see what they're doing. So when you're in that space, you really want to move fast. You don't want to overinvest. You know, it really is the time. You want to look great so that you get the opportunity that's out there. But you also want to do something that in probably, I would say, three years, you start, it's three to five years, you're probably ready for a refresh. And that time might be the time you might have grown to a point where it's just clear that if you don't invest in your brand, you're going to miss out on opportunities. And I think that that comes when it's too risky to communicate the wrong thing to customers. Like if you have that one time to grab someone and you're going to miss them because you miscommunicated. Or sometimes businesses come to us and like really their risk factor is they are growing so fast, they need to recruit the right people. And they're having trouble communicating why they're so great, why they're so valuable, why they do business the way they do business. And that's a point where it's like you need that clear story about your mission, vision, values and translate it into something very quick and easy, something that people can remember so that every decision they're making about your business goes back to that focus. So I hope this helps. But early on, I would say you want to do it quick and good. You still want it to be great, Mm -hmm. but you don't have to invest too much. And then depending on kind of your business growth, you're going to hit these certain milestones like you did. 
where you realize what you have isn't enough. And if you started with the right foundation, those kind of refreshes could be more minor. If you need to do something where what you've realized is you've been growing in a path and you actually have to redirect that path, that's when it does probably require more time and resources. And it can be hard to justify. But the flip side, if you don't do it, you're going to keep growing down that wrong path. You're going to continue to have pain points. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, those pain points are costly. Like the wrong customers are actually costly. Team members that don't understand really become a bigger problem. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Tori. I mean, when you think about for someone that's willing to make the investment in the process, what pain points does it solve? So there are quite a few pain points, but I think about there's four that kind of stick out to me. Trust and loyalty is one of the top ones. So customers right now and clients have so many choices. And it's very easy in a lot of industries, a lot of businesses for people to kind of try something out and then move on. So you really want to find those customers and clients that stick with you, that help you grow, that you're providing the best value for. So having like a clear brand that stays consistent, that communicates your value does instill that trust and loyalty. And that's worth more than anything else. Like if you don't have that, you're going to spend all this money and marketing efforts that just produce a churn of clients or don't even convert someone into a client or a customer. So trust and loyalty is huge. Next, I would say internal clarity and focus. And this is the other thing that, you know, I could honestly flip those two of what matters more because internal clarity and focus, that's how you grow your team. That's how you keep everyone aligned. That's how you make decisions. That's how you stay away from the shiny object syndrome where you're starting a business and there's just these exciting things and knowing what to pursue next. It's so important to know this is the right thing for us and internal clarity really in focus helps that. Outshine and differentiate. This is another one that is very exciting because when you're able to do a great brand that communicates clearly, you're really in your own category. Your competitors become kind of like not really an option because you're the only one and you're the only option. So you actually get to set your price because your customers aren't really looking to someone else. They're going to go to you because you offer the only thing in the only way that they need it. And you've communicated that so they know it's worth paying. Then recruitment and retention is the last one. Because this is always an area you... Nearly every business is comprised of people. As people, we need to be around like a certain purpose And no one wants to go just into a job and clock in, clock out. We all want to know that the work we're doing has meaning, is having a bigger impact than just on ourselves. And having that clear, I think every business has that opportunity to produce something valuable for their community, something valuable for their team, for their customers, and be able to communicate that and why that matters is so important because it keeps us going to work, keeps us excited, keeps us helping, finding those problems that no one else could solve. All right, Tori. So, yeah, I'm curious when you think about, and I know for us, there was a lot of internal clarity and a real definition of purpose that we got going through the experience with your team. How do you guys approach that? I mean, maybe talk a little bit about your intentionality in that area. So getting internal alignment can be a big challenge. And anyone knows that it actually can be a big challenge regardless of the size of an organization. We've worked with teams that are, you know, a team of six or less, a team of four. And everyone has such a different opinion. It's just difficult for them to align. And Mm -hmm. again, that's why having an outside partner can be so helpful because often we're acting as a facilitator. We come in in more of a guide. It's kind of a something that we offer that's really similar to the floor group. We are stepping in to advise, to listen, to hear, and then to find those areas where someone just might not realize what someone else is saying. Because at the end of the day, if you're operating a great business, there's clearly alignment. It just might be everyone comes to the table with a different expectations and a different background. We interpret things differently. So the way we help produce that alignment is we always start off, you know, we do a clear kickoff for a project. We get everyone in the room. It's very important to us on that kickoff to talk through any of the decision makers need to be involved in the process. They need to be there for certain milestones, which again, kind of goes back to that time commitment and resources. But 
on our end, our job is we make the most of their time. We are taking away the lift of synthesizing the information, gathering the right information, and interpreting it back. So we always align. We make sure we have the right decision makers. We also make sure that there's not too many decision makers. So sometimes we work with clients to kind of find who is that right person to be in the room versus who you really don't want just the whole team. You want the people who are making the decisions. And sometimes that's a process to get the right names and the right people in those seats. Then we typically do these blind surveys. So we'll send out a survey. And with that survey, we get answers that no one else can see. So we do these surveys actually in two different ways. Sometimes we send out a survey where we have everyone's input and you can see each other's answers and people can kind of riff off of each other. And occasionally that's when the client, it's just clear that there is alignment, that they're going to produce better answers if they're responding to each other's. The other option, and when we kind of see that there might be different opinions coming in, is this blind way. Everyone fills out a survey. We distill those surveys. And then the workshop we host, we take direct verbatim answers and kind of bucket them into groups of whether the pain point with an organization feels like they don't quite understand how to articulate their culture or there are cultural kind of misalignments or maybe they're like mission, vision, values. Someone might be thinking we as an organization may be going one way. Someone might be thinking something else. So we want to bring those assumptions and maybe the places where it's clear there might be misalignment to the table and those come to the round table. And then we do open discussion. And as facilitators, we're very careful to make sure we are getting some feedback from everyone at the table. So there's oftentimes people who are very comfortable speaking, who are always going to show up and feel great about taking control, giving their opinion. There's other people who sit with it and you really have to pull it out of them, what they're thinking. And that is our job. And I think we work very hard to do that well. We done a lot of training to make sure that we facilitate these in a way that does produce the best results where we get the best insight. And then after that roundtable, really one of the other benefits of the roundtable is everyone there is sitting and hearing each other. So by the time we send over kind of our findings or the next brand iteration, say with the Plur group, we were working on naming. So the outcome of that workshop was these name directions. Everyone had heard their rationale there might have been arguments or might have been like heated discussions, but whatever it was, that really helps because everyone's processing it together. So by the time we come up with this like brand direction or brand foundation, it's really come from that team and from that session. So everyone has the same context. So they understand why we're leaning in a direction or if a direction doesn't feel right, we all have common language to address it and say, you know, we really decided that we want to go this direction and we're able to respond to that. Do you run into a lot of situations where you don't have people in the room that you're trying to pull things out of and it's really just everyone at the table has (laughs) a lot that they want to share? Because I think that was more of the situation on our end. And I can definitely see where that term business therapy came in that you mentioned earlier. (laughs) It is actually so fun and exciting to work with clients that have a lot of opinions that come to the table and they're very excited because they care about the business, they care about the organization, they care about where it's coming. I would actually say I would prefer everyone to come to the table with opinions and with ideas and with really like strong opinions because it's at that table, that round table that we can work them out. And we really haven't been in a situation where, honestly, the harder situation for us is when people to come to the table and it's just kind of clear that they don't care. That is really hard because the work we do is really based on digging into that purpose, that why, and getting to the bottom of it. And those questions can be really hard and frustrating if someone is not committed to figuring it out. I don't know that Simon Sinek, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but his book, Start With Why, he goes into like really the purpose, how to get to a why and why it matters to know your why. And it's never just one question. It's like you almost have to ask the question, why over and over again until you get to something significant and different. So these roundtables are almost 
better if you have people coming with strong opinions because they're going to tell you what they think and it's going to be challenged. So I would say you almost have to have this courage to speak up and to say an opinion, but also that humility of the round table is about getting to the essence and distilling away assumptions we have that we think are either make us different or make us significant, but it might be that there's something else there, or it might be that there's some thing we're saying or we're doing that's actually holding us back because we don't realize that what that says about our business says the opposite. I think we've dealt with many groups, you know, it's common, for instance, I think when you don't do this work, what happens is you get these very common mission, vision, values that are like, you know, we'll be the best provider. We will be X, Y, Z. And when you have something that just says, we will be the best financial analyst, the best, it doesn't actually get to a core need of your clients or a core purpose for your organization. It's like, well, why? Why do you want to be the best? What does that provide? And I think the Plur group, what was awesome about those round tables and that work was you all were committed to finding that. You knew that there was a reason and a purpose and you were excited about that and you were committed to that process and to that challenge of everyone had opinions, but at the end of the day, you wanted it to communicate right and you were headed in the right direction, the same direction. It was just, we needed that alignment and that was what the round table was for. Yeah, it was a really good experience in the sense that it got everybody articulating what their perspective was and how they saw things from their own vantage point. You guys did a remarkable job of pulling that together into a story, even when we didn't follow your instructions. You guys overcame that little challenge. It's okay. Yeah. (laughs) We deal with that often. We're dealing with entrepreneurs. You know, no one likes to follow instructions. They don't like to hear no. So (laughs) So we weren't the first to bail out on the instructions we were given. But one of the things, again, I articulated earlier, Tori, that I just think you guys did a fantastic job of is, is capturing the essence of the culture. And really what you've spoken to today is, I mean, you follow the process of intentionality. Obviously, we came together at a time when we were ready for it, Mm -hmm. which really ultimately was a function of our desire to, as I said earlier, change the story of who we are, not because it was changing, but because we weren't doing a great job of articulating who we were with our current brand story. And that gave us, again, a chance to work through this process with you and get to a really good spot. When you think about it, again... Some people think brand, as we talked about earlier, is just a logo. Others think it's what somebody might say about you, which is certainly true. Those are components of it. But what do you think a really good brand can do to articulate a culture and help everybody tell that story? Yes. So there is so much confusion on what branding is and isn't. And I think part of it is because it's a concept. There is a certain amount of it that is you know, almost theory. And then there's practice. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it can get into that area of, you know, it's hard. It can be difficult to even talk about. But what I will say is one of the, almost the easiest things to point to is I think oftentimes with business and marketing, brand can be left out of the conversation or the way it's talked about is only in brand assets, like the logo or the photography or the typography. And That's one of the reasons why we really started Circa is we saw this need of branding is really more than that. If you just focus on those brand assets, you're missing out on really what a brand can do. And the kind of irony of this, and this is one of the reasons why we work so collaboratively, is that what a brand can do, like articulating the why of an organization If you don't do that work and you just focus on how it looks and the words you use, you're really going to be stuck in this zone of like communicating just like your competitors. And an organization is always going to kind of feel a little frustrated that you can't quite get through. We're so different. We're so much better because you haven't done that work of like, well, why and how and who are you that makes you so much better? So that work, again, comes from an organization. So as a partner, we really can't go into an organization and define that for them if they are not committed and they're not involved. And again, that takes time and resources. So there's this challenge of groups 
get to a certain size and to do the work that your group did, it requires kind of a pause and it requires this time where the leaders and the decision makers who already don't have much time on their plate because they're running the business have to come together and set aside time to say, we're going to do this work. So us as an organization, I can encourage people to do that, but I can't make them. Mm -hmm. So it was so wonderful to work with your team where you did know we're going to do it. We're going to do it well. We're going to do it right. Then on our side too, no organization's the same. So even though we have this process of getting the information, every one of these workshops, everyone in this discovery, everyone's brand is actually very customized to them. So we do kind of walk through similar steps, but no one's round table looks the same because we're considering who's in the room. So again, I might have deviated from your actual question of like, what does a brand do for a group and why is it important? But if that helps explain, if you don't have that why there, then the brand assets that you're creating are probably just kind of coming from the surface level explanation of your organization. You're probably using a lot of language that your competitors use. So then again, your customers and clients are seeing you and they're comparing you to your competitors, and it all kind of looks and sounds the same. So they're just going to kind of make a choice mm-hmm. based off of either, you know, they liked someone more. I mean, it's not going to be aligned with your core vision and the core value you create because it's too hard to get to that from the surface level. And then you end up spending more money in marketing because you have to attract more people. And some of those people are the right people and some people aren't. And then you have to deal with that. You have to bulk up your operations, all that. So all that to say, when you do the branding right, it actually saves a lot of money down the road. It saves a lot of heartache and headache. It makes work more joyful and it makes it more profitable. So even though it's so challenging to pause and say, let's get it right, the payoff is so great. It's worth it. It's just hard to convince people because as business owners, it is hard to pause and to see value in investing kind of in a long-term solution rather than the quick, let's just get out that ad, let's do some more Google paid AdWords. There could be this like, just like this need to get out the word and instead of pausing and doing it right. And Chelsea can probably speak to that about the need to feel like with marketing, there's this extreme pressure to see results and to see them fast. And branding is not branding well You can do it iteratively, like I spoke, but it is work and it requires work on the business's team. So Chelsea, I actually would love to hear from your opinion and how, in your experience, how you felt that pressure between brand, pausing for the brand, and then getting out the marketing kind of execution and not letting that fall behind. Tori, I love the way you just articulated that sometimes you have to pause and actually do the work and put the time and the investment in. And then you can start to reap the benefits on the other side. I think knowing that we had to kind of hit that pause button and do the intentional kind of longer process of going through a brand refresh, it definitely took time. But now being on the other side of it, I know Tim can probably share this because he's, you know, out even more so speaking with our clients. It resonates so much more with our audience now. And so now a year removed from doing all of this work, we're really starting to reap the benefits and see that being able to tell that story now is to your point in the long run, probably saving us money on a lot of those smaller marketing initiatives that we previously were doing because we took the time and made the effort to really be able to tell our story and articulate it well. And now it's just resonating with our clients so much and our potential clients that we're really starting to reap those benefits. So I love the way that you articulated that sometimes just kind of hitting the pause button, slowing down, doing the intentional work will really pay off in the end. I love to hear that, Chelsea. I think it is so awesome to hear just straight from your account, the effects of branding. Because again, I think there can be this disconnect that should not be there between brand and marketing. They really go hand in hand. They're really like one and the same and they need to work together. Because again, all the work with a brand, if you don't actually get that work out into the marketplace, if you aren't using that story, if you're not using that work and those words, and then same thing, if it's not reflected in your website or through advertising, you're not actually benefiting from the brand. So they go hand in hand. And one of the things that we 
say at Circa is our mission is really creative that counts. It's doing this work that really sets you know, the right tone, feel, communicates clearly, but then at the end of the day, it generates results. Because really, with these businesses and organizations, you want to grow so that you can create more of the thing that you do best and the thing that you value. So I just love hearing that about both you, Tim, and Chelsea, the effects of that story. Because at the end of the day, I do think one of the most valuable things about this brand process is that story it creates and that thing that each of your employees, each of your team members are able to take wherever they go and speak confidently to the work you do, because that communicates what you're doing and why in a way that your whole team can own, but then also your customers and clients understand and can get behind and are thrilled and understand that value that they're giving to you and that they get back in return. Yeah, I think Tori, you and your team did a fantastic job of articulating that. And Chelsea and her team did a great job of kind of marshalling our entire organization through the conversation and getting us to a place where we had a story about who we are that is truly reflective of who we are. It's authentic. So when people experience it, they didn't just hear it. And it's not what it is. It's totally aligned to what you said earlier about the importance of getting alignment. So kudos to you. And thank you to Chelsea and her team for the work they did. Because again, the work of truly kind of leaning into a conversation about rebranding and doing it around culture. To your point earlier, you can do some quick logos. And I have the same, you know, the easy way becomes the hard way. The hard way becomes the easy way. And I think it's fair to say the easy way is just do a refresh of the logo and, you know, some color schemes. And you'll probably be banging your head a year down the road. The hard way is to take the time and the effort, hit the pause button, and really dive in deep to a process like this and get something that does become easier over time. So you guys did a fantastic job in that regard. Maybe one more question for today. You know, I'm an entrepreneur listening today, interested in exploring a brand refresh. And what, in your opinion, is the best first step? Okay, the best first step would be to do your own kind of self examination of your organization to sit and think why does your organization exist? Why did you start this? Sometimes I think that's why starting with the brand process early on can be so valuable. That brand starter package that I mentioned, we focus a lot on preserving that why. So as you grow, you might articulate it differently, but it never really changes. I would say it's almost like a journaling process. You sit and you just write out, write the things that you were afraid to put in a business plan because they sounded too silly. You know, I think a lot of times that why it can feel insignificant to say, well, I started a business because I'm juggling a family and I wanted the flexibility of having time to work for, you know, in the hours that I can work, but I wanted to do really great work. And I might not put that into my business plan, but it was an essential part of the why. And I'm kind of mentioning from Circa, but there's other organizations or even like the Plura Group. It's like, why? It's not just about finance. It's about helping people live their best. It's about giving them the freedom and allowing them to take the risks that they need to take. So it's just so important to sit and write the things that really create that why and don't be afraid to put things that kind of feel, even if they feel superficial, just write it down, get that together. And then I think a great exercise to do if you're doing something on your own is to think of five years from now, where you'd want to be, what revenue, you know, put those into writing, revenue, goals, time commitment to work, what types of clients, all that sort of thing. What's your vision for your business? Because then if you backtrack, you could see either it might be the time to invest in your brand because if your brand keeps going in the way it is, it's not going to attract those, that customer or it's not going to grow in the way you'd like to. Or maybe you just realize that like you're going to table it for now and you're going to work on word of mouth and you're going to work on articulating it better and getting a better focus so that you really know why. And then when we start that brand process, you come to the table with like a clear understanding of who you are, why you do what you do, what you do and how you do it. And if you come with that, we're able to work magic because that work is very hard to do if you haven't done some of that on your own. That's great counsel. 
appreciate the time today. So thank you again to Tori Thomas, CEO and co-founder of Circa, and to Chelsea Pulowski, head of marketing at the Flora Group. It's been a very informative conversation. Thanks for joining us in another episode of Winning Through Culture. And until we're together again, be impactful and be relevant. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Chelsea. This is awesome.